As Ronnie told you, my name is Gabi, Gabi Weyers. Um, I'm head of Lima, and uh, Lima distributes, preserves, and researches media art. Um, I'll not only focus on the cases of Peter Strauken in this project, but I will start uh, more like where we're coming from, our software-based art repository, and uh, especially the workflow. Um, to show where we're coming from, I uh, selected a quite old installation, very much related to the history of uh, Montevideo. Let's see if I can get there. Oh, no. Could you? I thought, yeah. Here it is, huh? This one? Yeah. Maybe you've seen it already over the years. Now I just, uh, furthermore, I use the slides, so no interference. Um, it's good, it's good. I was showing you this uh, installation, or like this video recording of this installation, because Montevideo, NIMC, and so on, is often very much related or recognized as a video institute, but there are many, many, many software-based artworks uh, produced over the years already in the early uh, 80s, um, and this work is from the early 90s, made by Bill Spinhoven. And uh, as you probably saw, it's the monitor with a closed circuit camera on it, and it is an interactive uh, uh, installation. The software was written by the artists uh, using basic five assembler and an acorn. I'm not sure if I pronounce this right, an Archimedes operating system at RISC OS, and that was in the early 90s. And over the years, Bill made new versions of this installation, emulated it, and nowadays there are all kinds of web-based versions. And he's one of the artists that is really in a lot of preservation projects on software-based art. He's the one that helps out with uh, emulating but also, nowadays, he includes in his artworks code that, and a, a, a library so you can see the behavior and you can see how to install it and you can see when certain parts should be changed. So he incorporated the idea of the maintenance of his work in his work. It's one of the rare artists that, uh, that do. Um, I think between uh, mid 80s and <clears throat> 2010, over 100 media art installations, so basically software art installations, were produced by uh, Montevideo and NIMC. Um, and not only installations that were totally digital born, but also installations that had certain digital devices like synchronization systems and so on. Um, just some examples, uh, the, the revolution of Jeffrey Shaw, uh, Dune by uh, uh, Daan Rosengaarde, Marnix de Nijs, you see there, and De Geuze, 
hopefully well-known example here. Um, these works were presented worldwide since we distributed these works. That also meant that we had to present these installations everywhere, globally. So the team was very much known in how to document the work and what the parameters would be to install the work. Although the equipment was taken care of by the artists. And the artists often could come along to the festival or to the museum to install the installation. From uh, 2000 on, uh, NIMC started this artist in residency for, uh, for digital art. And I can give you many more examples, but for instance, this one from Sonia Chilari, you can check it out online, and it's also got a prize at the Ars Electronica. Some examples of the documentation. <coughs> of course, there's also technical documentation, but we're also always used to make this kind of floor plans and uh, estimations to how to install the installations. And uh, for instance, the information then would be stored in our collection information system. Um, this is the work from Sonia Chilari, you saw. He, at this way, we described the work. So really low tech, in a low tech way, just documenting it storing the files, and we also use this system to store all the versions. Like uh, in video, of course, you have different edits of work or subtitles related or other cases, variations or new versions, emulated versions, but, <clears throat> but also in the software-based works, there are many versions and layers that are stored in this system. For that, we used already 10 years before the NEN, before the norm, uh, a hierarchical system, how to describe it, on a work level, variations, manifestations, and the diversity of items related. Um, NIMC was also uh, 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 participating in many European projects. I think in the projects uh, inside installations, we started, as far as I'm aware, with emulating uh, software-based artworks <coughs> or digital artworks. I'm not sure we called them software-based at that time. Probably we called them computer-based. And uh, this is the emulation proposal of the work of Jeffrey Shaw I show, showed you in the pictures. And it's really, really, an old technical work uh, based on CD-ROM, uh, not CD-ROM, LaserDisc. So yesterday we talked about CD-ROMs and emulation of all kinds of material. We also still have a lot of digital, maybe not digital works, but using uh, uh, LaserDisc as the, 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 the storage for the storage of the interaction and also the video that's uh, related to it. Um, this kind of schemes we then also make of the works to show the different components and to give an insight information to do so. So there's a very long history in relation to producing, presenting, distributing and preserving works. A lot of video preservation projects we did, but also the more the ones that were more related to born digital material and born digital art, basically. Um, and in 2012, when the budget cuts came up, then we were thinking like, okay, how to deal with the next, uh, the next step, how to continue, what is special in what we do. A lot of people produce, a lot of people present, also a lot of people distribute. Let's see if we can focus in a way or on preservation. Uh, so from there on, preservation is uh, really our focus or our core business. Um, we are an expertise center for media art preservation and we are a very small, tiny organization, but we, have in, we are, operating in this 
network, this very international network, this very interdisciplinary network as well. And we, in a way, uh, developed one approach for many. Most of our customers nowadays are the museums and the private collectors. But at the other hand, of course, we also provide all these artists we work with, with our knowledge in archiving and so on. So Lima uh, has three tasks set for itself. The, the, the basis is the, uh, the digital repository. So we store and digitize and manage and preserve and mediate media artworks for artists and the collection. Sometimes I call it digital repository. Sometimes I probably will say the e-depot. I'm not sure yet which word would have my preference, but yeah, let's see how it evolves. Um, we are still an agency, a distributor, so we have our own collection, and we are facilitate, facilitating research and development of best practices and training and so on. And as I told you, as a distributor, we are used to execute or to present the works all over the world under different circumstances. So we are very used to all these variations and to give access to a diversity of works. Um, we still continue, continued our distribution service and also our <coughs> software-based art are still in, uh, in distribution. Um, I think we present about 400 works a year worldwide um, from our own collection and of course over all these years when the works came in and we also worked for the museums at that time, we always had quality control and checking this and checking that and storing and uh, emulating and also delivering for distribution. But when we started Lima, we were thinking about how to get that more in a workflow and could other people explain how we do it and why we do it like that. So over the last two years, we are working on this uh, workflow. Um, we start with quality control. As I said, we're working a lot for the museums and uh, we start with uh, 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 guiding them in purchasing work, uh, do quality control, um, and then of course capture the work, make archival information packages, manage the data, I'll give you an example soon, and then also be able to deliver the work later on. Um, at the moment, we have, I would say, 250 complex installations, software-based installations in the repository. Um, one better described than the other, of course. We are still uh, researching it. And uh, we have around 200 terabytes on the server and some extra backups on, uh, on LTO tapes and so on. I'm not sure if you're familiar, but I think so. Huh? The Open Archival Information System, this is a kind of standard for, uh, for archiving digital assets. Um, you could also make this out of it. It's actually the same, but a different layout. Um, these are the institutions that use our, <coughs> our ADPO. Uh, it's around 25 uh, institutions and 500 mm -hmm. artists. So, this is an introduction to the project uh, Transformation Digital Art. A project coordinated by the Foundation of the Conservation of Contemporary Art, the SBMK. It's a, call, it's a group of uh, people in the Netherlands basically based at museums that together form the SPMK and they exchange uh, their work on uh, uh, modern materials, 
Um, there's also an international version, it's called INCA, International Network for the Conservation of Contemporary Art. And we have like, the Dutch section. Um, together with us, uh, so SPMK and Lima together came up with this project for software-based art. And we're thinking and looking in the collections of the Netherlands. There are not so many software-based arts, I must say. But Peter Struike is a Dutch pioneer that really started already in the 60s working with computers. And uh, so we selected three works from different collections. Um, the first work, DISP, we only have a video recording of a series of works and uh, with his voice over explaining what you see. It's online, if you want to see it, I can send you a link. <coughs> um, if you would reconstruct the work nowadays, it's maybe not so interesting. It would look like a very slow screensaver maybe. But the story behind it is fascinating. In, at that time, he had the opportunity to go once a week to a technical university that bought him a color monitor. I forgot the amount of money that that cost at that time, but that was tremendous. And he was really privileged to have access to that kind of equipment. You cannot think about it nowadays. Um, so originally we were thinking about reconstructing that work, but now we said, okay, we're going to make a um, documentation about it and do that with the program, I'm not sure you know, ArtTube. ArtTube is a program in the Netherlands where the museums have, like say, documentaries on, on art. So this will be a, a, a very low profile uh, 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 documentary about how to maintain or how to preserve software-based art, and using this as an example. The other work is uh, Shift 3.4. Um, that was a work made for the Groninger Museum, and later on, um, new versions were made. So there were already like emulated versions, emulated by, uh, by the artists and uh, some programmers. And the uh, third work we are researching is Blocks. And Blocks is, in a way, a very old 3D work uh, projected in a specific space in the Gemeentemuseum Den Haag. And uh, I'm not sure how long it was presented, but quite soon, they stopped the presentation because they didn't like uh, 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 to have it so prominent at that position in the, in the museum and they wanted to do something else. So one of the questions for this work is, was also like, can this work be presented somewhere else or is it very specific made for that location? Um, if you really want to know more about the case studies and in detail, Nina van Doren is here. She's the one that did the research, so she can tell you a lot about, uh, about the cases. Um, we use these cases also to see how to come to a workflow, to uh, uh, a way how to structure the work we do, and to see what we forget, or what we can do, or what we should do. Um, we talk about pre-ingest, so that's all the work that needs to be done before it comes to us. And uh, um, in that, of course, we have to contact, or we have to contact with, uh, with the museum or the other organization. And we provide them with purchase contracts, documentation, and artist interview help or support. But they, of course, are responsible for that. 
And together with a, and a video registration, we also want to have a video registration of the installation or software-based artworks. And uh, we provide them with lists what questions one could ask or one should ask the artists uh, in relation to the work. Um, this is one of these questionnaires. Um, if the source code is available, if, the, if it's hardware specific, all this kind of question. There are many of these questionnaires. Huh? We just try to pick the best from everyone and compile it to this one. And of course, it's never fixed. It will always change a little bit. That's how it works. And from here, it goes uh, into, uh, into our system. Um, for this installation, the work was delivered on CD-ROM and on an SD card, and it was in, in the, in the uh, collection of the Kurla Müller Museum in the Rabobank, and um, it was also, of course, in all platforms, so it, he delivered it for, for several platforms as well. Um, <clears throat> we made then an ISO, ISO of the CD-ROM, of course, and, uh, and the backup of the cards, and all was identified and described. And for that, we used like these, I know, I, th I think you know them, I hope you know them, this di diversity of uh, properties to, to make a report out of it. And then still store all this information in the collection information system we have. Although um, we could need some update of this system, of course. But this is what we have and what we have to deal with and we're trying to, to update it soon. So what's next is the name of uh, this information system. Um, so the, the ISOs are made, um, I told you already that it was delivered on several platforms. And of course there were, there were uh, all kinds of tests done. So the diversity of platforms was tested, um, also a virtual machine was tested. Um, you see Paul, Paul Janssen Klomp and uh, Nina here in these silly pictures uh, looking at the diversity of, uh, of versions. And we also, within the project, I forgot to mention, within the project every four months or so, we had a meeting with uh, the, the uh, conservators, the technical staffs of the museum and so on to as a sort of workshops, how to emulate, how to discuss, how to discuss how specific an, uh, a, a certain uh, location is for a work. For this work, then, we decided to deliver it uh, on this small <laughs> mini PC for presentation in the future. And everything is stored and everything, next week we, we will have the discussion um, how often we should check the work, for sure, all the hashtags are in it, and we will check it uh, twice a year. And this, some works we emulate, other works we don't, but then every three years or every five years we should run everything just to, to see if it's function. I don't see another way yet how to, how to deal with it, but we will do this checking. Um, so the files are all copied to the server and for sustainable archiving on LTO stored, checked twice a year. And I think we will present the results in February. So there will be a, a, a seminar with a lot of workshops, but like with uh, workshops, uh, how to document software-based art, but hopefully also workshops how to buy net art. 
So to see if people can be, as I say, inspired to do so. Um, from here on, we go for more research. Um, next year, there is a PhD position for the conservation of computer-based art at the University in Amsterdam. Um, there is a research starting on how to archive uh, it, dynamic interactive works. Ellen is here as well. If you want to know more about that, uh, please ask her. These are all collaborative projects. Huh? A lot of this research is done and still needed, and still this awareness where we started yesterday, the, the, the conference with it is, uh, is so needed um, because there's so, still so much work to be done. And not only because it's so under-collected and we have these black holes or white spots in the, in the collections, and also the whole discussion about who's in charge to preserve, is it a museum, is it not? Because most of the, the museum in the Netherlands don't have that much software-based works, so how to, how to maintain the works that are not in the collections, or how to inspire the museums to buy more works. Um, that's one of the reasons why we still need to give some more attention to all this. But at the other hand, of course, also because it's still evolving. These works are dynamic. It's not one version. They change over time. It's not one object. And many institutions and conservators are not yet used to it. Maybe they will get, but it takes some time. And. Uh, we don't have so much time because the change is going rapid and will never stop. So the last year or the year before, there was a, a whole interview project from the, I think, the Smithsonian, where some experts were asked, and these were the, ten, these were the points they came up with. Very simple, but very true. So embrace un uncertainty and take action. This is not the crowd I have to tell. This crowd takes action, and this crowd cooperates. Um, many research is needed. Um, I didn't tell about the other projects we're doing. Of course, we're also doing a lot of projects in relation to reconstructing work, or restaging work, or giving artists the chance to make a work based on, for instance, work by the Fazulkas, or other artists. So reenact. Mm, I think I'll keep it here. There was one remark I wanted to, wanted to make, but uh, yesterday we discussed and mentioned the need of sustainable art and uh, sustainable archives and uh, sustainable networks. And uh, we were talking about all these communities the, 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 the hackers, the amateurs, the liefhebbers, and, uh, and many more. But I would like to add another community, and a very obvious one, the community as we are here together, dedicated professionals. So thank you for sharing your experience and practice. And have a good day, good conference.